So guys, today I'm going to talk about how to rate your trades. And why is that? Because I'm, I'm hearing Mayor and Scott talking a lot of times, and that's because you are asking, which is great. Hey, Mayor, do you trade the, uh, every time with the same share size? Hey, Scott, how, what is your trade management? I remember a few days ago, Scott uh, explained about how he's, he's taking 50 cents, he's waiting for a point, or 50 cents in order to get like 80 cents. And he said about his quantities. And Mayer also talked about his quantities and how he manage his trades. And you all know that I'm trade, each and every one of us is a different trader. And I really like to trade and to give to each trade a different perspective. And why is that? Because I think, and I think uh, Mayer and Scott told it uh, before, not all trades born equal. Okay? First of all, let's start with the assumption that uh, I'm not trading a, a normal share, not a normal, a, a, how do you say it? I'm not trading the same share size each and every time. Okay, if you remember, Mayer always saying in his uh, Star Trader course, start with 400 shares, which is extremely easy, you know, to calculate how much you are risking. You know that every cent that the stock is moving up, you are making $4, 8 12 16 20 and more. So it's very easy. And I know that today, Mayer is most of the time trading 2,000 shares, 4,000 shares, sometimes less, sometimes more, same with Scott. I used to trade different. So first of all, let's talk about how I'm uh, calculating my share size. So it's a very simple uh, formula. I will just write it down once because it's extremely simple. This is your risk unit, right? Divided by stop loss, let's say cents. equal share size okay risk unit divided by your stop loss in cents equal your share size there is someone in the room that this formula is new to him because it's extremely easy to explain let's assume that my risk unit is 100 dollar okay my risk for every trade is 100 dollar and i have a stock that looks like this let's draw really like this whiteboard you know clifton extremely easy to work with Okay, and let's assume that we have three different stop losses. Okay, and let's add some numbers. Let's say it's 50, 49, 90, 49, 80, and 49, 70. For example, in this, in this example, I don't think that if Mayer and Scott will take it, they will choose the right stop loss. They will take it above 50. They will take the breakout. In my strategies, in the way that I work, the way I trade, I'm calculating my share size first, okay? So let's assume my uh, stop loss will be 10 cents, okay? I'm seeing Netflix in my background. Okay, let's assume that my stop loss will be 10 cents, which means I'm taking $100, which is my risk unit, divided by 0 0.10 equal, 1,000 shares, okay? Let's take stop loss number two, $100. Let's add the dollar sign here as well. Okay, 100 divided by 0 0.2, right? $100 divided by 0 0.2 equal 500 shares, right? And I'm not going to explain the benefits in small, you know what, I will, because it's extremely easy. What's the difference between the stop losses? First of all, the strongest stop loss that we can see in this example is 49.70. And why is that? Because you can see the support over here was the strongest. Since 49.70, the stock did not move lower than that. We have support of buyer's ear. And actually, I can draw a line. Let's take the, the dot. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. I saw it. Thank you, Clifton. Let's assume that this is my stop loss. I'm taking this support. So I'm taking all this time of support that the buyers held the stock above this 49.70. This is the strongest stop loss. Uh, guys, can I make a quick sound test for Richard? Okay, sounds good. Hey, Linda. Okay, so Richard, try to log out and join us back again. Okay, so first of all, if I take this 49.70, this is the strongest stop loss. 
the odds that the stock will move against me and will move under 4970 are extremely low because this is the support of like let's say 20 minutes if we take let's say less stronger than that we'll take 4980 okay so it's still a strong stop loss but not like 4970 and exactly the same with 4990 this is the smaller stop loss and it's probably the 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 weaker from all of these three but what are the benefits if i'll take a stock if i'll take a breakout for example in this in uh, with stop loss number one 4990 so first of all i'm taking 1000 shares 1000 shares on each cent, I'm making uh, 10 bucks, right? So my first target is extremely close. I work in one to two, which means my first stop loss will be 50-20. If I would take 49.70 as a stop loss, what's the benefits? The strongest stop loss, but what, what's the disadvantage in, with such a long stop loss? Make it a bit easier if you want to use the ruler tool. Share your line from your point stop loss. They will automatically call it distance sense. Yes, of course, but, but most of your stop losses, uh, Shamis Din, hey, what's up, first of all? Most of your stop losses as a day traders will be between 10, 15, 20, 40, 50 cents and one point, you know? So that's why uh, I'm showing this example. So if I take 4970, it's extremely strong stop loss, but my first target will be 50, 60, okay? So first of all, I'm trading each and every trade. I'm taking different share size. 2800, 3500, 4000 shares sometimes. I mean, I'm building my position. Most of the time, I'm not taking a 10, 10, cent, a 10 cent stop loss right now above 50 because my risk is $800 and I'm not taking 8000 shares. Okay, I'm trying to build my position. I think my, my biggest size is more is like 4500 shares. So this is how I'm calculating my share size. Now let's delete all of it and continue so why I explained it to you because when I'm coming to this stock market to trade of course I'm calculating my share size as I mentioned but first of all let's say what I'm looking for when I'm coming to trade first of all I'm looking for a price I would like to trade stocks above 10 and between let's say 200 volume I would like to trade stocks that we have 1 million more or less a day so we have price volume let's say volatility Volatility, I would say, plus minus 3%. Okay. We have price, volume, volatility, and spread. The spread that I would like to trade is between 0 0.01, of course, until 0 0.07. Let's say like this. Now, first of all, as a traders, you don't need to spend more than two seconds in order to, to check it, right? This is something that you can't calculate. It's, you can't say, I don't agree. You know, sometimes I will say, oh, that's a good trade. And someone will say, no, I don't think it's a good trade. This is a reversal. No, it's not a reversal. Okay. And this is why I'm, I would like to explain uh, the difference. Because this, all these four parameters are easy to check. Easy to check, which means that uh, you don't need to spend more than two seconds of it. Just a second. Okay. So, how to measure volatility? You, you, you can see it. It's a good question, Ari. You can see the price. I can see the price. The volume, I can see the volume. The volatility, I can see up or down. I closed my platform in order not to take any more trades today, but I can see if the stock is up 4%, 3%. I can see it, measure it by eye. With, I mean, you will say the stock is up 4%. I have nothing to say about it. I will have to agree with you because it's number. It's not something that you think can I say no. These four parameters are extremely easy to check. Price, volume, volatility, and spread. And of course, spread, you need to follow the, uh, the stock for a few minutes, in a few minutes, few seconds, in order to see that you uh, not taking stocks that suddenly the spread will move from 2 cents to 10. Okay. After we checked all these four parameters, we are moving to things that not everyone will agree. First of all, trend. 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 I know you can say it's objective. It's not subjective. This is an uptrend. Well, I think it's a downtrend. Who will say who is right? Right, Ari? 
if ari or zanu belat or shamis shamis din so many names <laughs> will say yogi this is a beautiful downtrend and i will say no no i, I think we're moving up most of the time it will happen if the stock will open like this it happened today with roblox it closed yesterday here now it opened here and even though the stock is red sometimes this that this will be the trend okay and some someone will say this is not an uptrend i'm waiting to short the stock and i will say no i see th- i see higher highs and higher lows which is an uptrend i use the 9 and 50 emas to verify trend continuing and ending okay jim i don't like to work with the uh, emas intraday because the view up which calculating the volume in it is much more uh, relevant as a day traders okay so first of all let's delete this okay let's skip it that way so trend it's a subjective pattern pattern we have bull flag reversal cap and handle a double top double bottom ascending triangle we have so many patterns and you know i can show you so many charts and someone will say hey this is a beautiful cap and handle and the other one will say i don't see anything in this chart because this is subjective guys it's not something to measure like spread or price it's what's the trend do you see the pattern do you see the, this beautiful reversal i don't see any reversal i see bull flag i see bear flag and sometimes we are not agreeing with each other in the room right i'm saying beautiful bull flag uh, someone say yogi check uh, roku for a bull flag and i'm checking the chart and i'm saying listen roku looks great but this is not a bull flag okay because this is something that we can change you know change our thoughts about it so we have trend pattern and trade id trade id is let's delete lo I will not delete it let's move here what do i mean by trade id i mean by this is a reversal guy we all agree trade id for example in reversal is let's say 4950 the low is 4920 and the i is 50 for example to this trade i won't get i, I won't get to this trade i will not take it why is that and actually it's a beautiful trade you can take it i think most of the traders in the room will take it but i won't and why is that because my stop loss is 30 cents which means my first target is 50 10 so i won't take it okay this is the trading id how much i'm risking in order how much i'm ready to gain risk reward so far extremely easy now after we checked all this these parameters as i showed you here price volume volatility spread this is no question ask right this is something we can see in no time trend pattern trader did this is something you need to check with yourselves because this is something you can say i see it i don't see it it's good trade it's not a good trade this is a beautiful uh, cap and handle this is where you are trying to think let's say to give all your education to your trading okay take all what you learn all what you ever heard about Uh, a day trading in stocks and you are taking it and you say okay i see a cap and handle i see a beautiful uh, uh, uptrend and i think we're going to see a beautiful breakout and i check the atr i think we're going to see it accelerating higher okay now after we finished this seven parameters do you have any more things that you are adding to your checklist before you are taking a trade please add write in the chat it's important to the to the lesson s&p okay market direction that's a good one market direction what else market direction thank you jeff S&P and Q's. Yeah, I say market. You know, this is like, I'll take it. Like trade with strong catalyst EPS. Okay, sentiment where? LJ sentiment. It's like uh, you know what I will add sector. Maybe it's close to sentiment. What do you mean by extended, Willie? Okay. Come on guys, I need one more parameter. 
that you th this is my uh, second name. I mean, not good till cancel, but you know what I'm talking about. Come on. Linda, if you want to help them, now you can. What the most important thing for you as day traders? No volume already said. Volume, one million. Okay. I, I, I told Clifton it's going to be like a 25, 30 minute lesson, but uh, let's continue like this. We have another 15 minutes to talk about. Uh... Thank you, Linda. <laughs> I knew Linda will help me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I need to live in a, a 15, 20 minutes. Yogi, do you think neutral should hide their PNL when trading and only focus on points? It helped me uh, go way back. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think they should look at it and control themselves. Okay? So, the daily chart. Okay, guys. Now. Let's add VWAP because some of you write VWAP and I will add it because indicators are extremely important. Now, watch this. What are we talking about? We are coming to the stock market and we are asking, wait a second. I know that we have 7,000 stocks to trade among, but I would like to trade stocks only with volume. You know what? I will go to Finviz. I won't share my screen and I will show you extremely fast the numbers. So. Uh, let's take Finviz right now. If I go to Screener, it will show me 8,300 stocks, 8,000 stocks. I will change the volume, average volume, over 1 million. From 8,000, I have 1,800. 7,000 shares irrelevant. It's always, I'm always saying that it's very uh, tough for me to find good stocks to trade because I'm extremely like this I'm extremely focused I want this and that and this and that and you can see my list this is my checklist so first of all I just changed the volume from 8,000 shares I have one 1,000 stocks to choose from if I'll change the price to where is the price price I will ju just change the price to over 10 from 1800 I have 1200 shares 1200 shares uh, Jeff, support and resistance, I will take it to the pattern, I will take it to the trade area, okay? So I have 1,200 shares, and if I'll choose stocks only, I don't want to trade ETFs and stuff like this, I have 961 shares, okay? So first of all, effect of daily volume is not the same at the volume minute or volume five minute. Uh, Ari, I don't, I'm not sure I understand your question, but I will tell you that. When I'm trading, I'm trading stocks that the average volume is 1 million sh shares a day. But 95% of the time, the stocks that you are following are opening the market. The, the, at the opening, will have like 8,000, uh, 800,000 shares and more than a million or two or more. So most of the time, the most volatile stocks have high volume. And if we have high volume in high volatility, the spread most of the time will be smaller because we have so much buyer and sellers. The stock is extremely volatile, so people are trading it, and the spread will be smaller. Not always. It's not a rule, but most of the time. So I just show you how I moved from 8,000 shares uh, stocks to 961 just with two parameters, price and volume. If I will add volatility for today, change, let's go. We are moving up or down today? Down, let's down 3%. 96 96 that's it and guys most of them are not very good for trading okay so i just show you how i'm coming and i'm like wait a second i'm not uh, willing to trade any sh any stock i want to trade only stocks that the price is between 10 to 200 boom from 8000 stocks i have 1000 i would like to trade stocks with more than 1 million shares from 1800 1200 i would like to trade stocks with volatility of 3% up or down 96. So I started with, let's, let's write it down because it's funny. I started with 8,000, let's see, that was six, something, no, who cares? Something like that. And then I moved to 1,800, and then 1,200, and then 96. You can see how I'm adding parameters, and it's narrowing me down. No more than 96 stocks to check. For example, 
Now, after I checked all these four parameters, as I mentioned, this is something that you don't need to work with your brain. This is, what's the price of AA? 51. It took me like more than a second because I'm in the middle of the class, but it's extremely, extremely easy. So, let's move on. I'm saying that after we checked only four parameters and we have so many more to check, trend, pattern, trader, the sector, or market direction, the daily chart, the view up, it's extremely hard for us to find good trades. For me, you know what, for me, because I'm extremely like, uh, eh, this is relevant, this is relevant, I don't like this, I don't like that. This is a nice trade. No, I won't take it because of its daily chart, and it took me so much time. You know, today someone mentioned the Facebook meta in the chat, and I said, wow, amazing chart. Fa meta, amazing chart, but I don't like its daily chart, so I won't take it. Because if you will ask me, this is the most important thing in day trading, which helped me to be profitable, and that's why I'm giving it the, the high respect among all of these parameters, okay? So, it's extremely tough for us as day traders to find stocks. Few things that people do. Sometimes, people say, you know what? Because it's extremely difficult to find stocks like this, to trade with all these parameters, I will create, which is okay, I will create a watch list that I know already that all the first four has it. For example, I will show you this watch list. You can help me in the chat. For example, I don't need to check. AMD also always volatile, volume, spread, price. AMD, MU, Roblox, Nevada, Tesla. Thank you, Tesla. What else? Help me to write some more. Uh, uh, Netflix, thank you. I'm having a blackout. Netflix. I closed all my... Uh, let's say AA, BA, thank you. Baba, JD, PDD, all the Chinese talks. Bubu, yeah, Buba, <laughs> Marisa. <laughs> Coin, Coin, Amazon. Exactly right. It's not a scanner. Uh, Jacob Intel, I don't like to trade it. Intel is a very heavy stock. Le not much volatility in Intel, right? So, guys, uh, you can see I just wrote 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 stocks, something like that. Meta, I forgot, yeah. Talked about it and I forgot to mention. Okay. So, Microsoft. After Microsoft, that's it. So, Microsoft. First thing you can do is to make a watch list of stocks that you know that already you can you don't need to check the first for price, volume, volatility, and spread. You know what volatility AMD and Roblox are not moving every day 4%, but AMD, AMU, Roblox, Nvidia, Tesla, Netflix, BA, Baba, PDD, JD, Coin, Meta, Microsoft, this is our stocks that for the last year and more because of this market situation, are moving each day all over the place. So this is the first thing you can do. Second is just to narrow your scanner in Finviz, in each and every other scanner, and to write down your stocks that you're about to follow. Let, now let's move on to how to weight your trades. Because I'm extremely, you know, I'm narrowing down, I'm extremely focused in what I would like to see in order to trade, if I will see two trades, for example, that looks exactly the same, okay? Trade number one, we have gap up like this. Trade number two, we have gap up like this. Now, let's assume the prices are the same, okay? 50 and 50. When I'm coming to trading, because I'm having, I don't want to say I'm having troubles, I'm having difficulties to find stocks, because I don't, but when I'm coming to trade, and I'm looking for something good to trade, I can teach, I can see two charts, okay, two charts, now I need to choose which one I would like to trade, and you know what, I would like to trade both of them, but in one of them, I will take, let's say, 50, and the stop loss will be 49.80, let's assume that our risk is $100, okay, that means that we need to do 100 divided by 0 0.2 equal 500 shares, right? In this trade, I will take 500 shares, okay? And in this trade, my stop loss will be 
and I will calculate it. It will be 100 divided 0 0.2 equal 1,000 shares. How is that? Why is that? Exactly the same chart, exactly the same numbers. Why is that? Because sometimes, let's talk about chart number one. Let's assume that the spreads in chart number one are six cents or four cents. And now four cents, it's okay, right? Four cents is extremely reasonable. It's extremely okay. You can trade it. It's not like you are saying, you know what? Okay, I will trade four cents. No, four cents, okay? It's something good. But in this one, we have chart number two. We have one cent of spread. In chart number one, the volume is 850k. It's okay. Again, you are allowed to trade chart number one because of the volume, because of the time, you can trade it. In chart number two, the volume is 2.5 million. And if I will open the daily chart and I will show you that chart number one is kind of a boring, you know, moving sideways, and chart number two, we are facing and gap up after one, two, three, four, five, six red days. Now the odds, the chart number two will bounce a bit higher, is extremely higher right now. And if I will add another parameter that we forgot to say, let's assume that we have short float, let's say 14%, I mean nothing like 20, short float 14%. Now, when I'm coming to trade, and I'm looking for a stock to trade, I can tell you that once in a week, I'm finding a stocks that all of these parameters are 100%. Once a week, I mean something like that, okay? But when I'm finding stock that everything looks great, everything looks amazing, you know our, I used to teach in Israel in a college, and I called it the house pattern. What do I mean by house pattern or house trade? What do you mean by house trade? This trade looks so good, I would put my house on it. This is the, the joke. When we are finding a chart that looks amazing and each and every one of the parameters are extremely fit, you know, like, wow, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And I'm saying it in the room. Sometimes when I'm trading, for example, that was Baba yesterday if, when I added a few times uh, UAL for example but I did not trade it but exactly exactly what I'm looking for when you find something not okay not good like trade chart number one when you find something like tr chart number two because it's extremely rare right you're not finding chart like this on a daily basis you need to think wait a second let's be objective before you are taking the trade before not after before you need to write down on a notebook two things. First of all, what is the rate for this trade? And I will tell you that among, okay, one irrelevant, from five to 10, six, eh, today I took six in, in, uh, in Google. That was not a good trade. I made 900 bucks, but still it's not a trade that I will show in a class. Guys, let's talk about my short, a short in Google. No, okay, it's not something I will teach. It's a six. Let's say my trade in Roblox, because it was a nice uptrend with, with the view up, it's seven, seven and a half, okay? And sometimes, I think that was like uh, two weeks ago. No, that was, uh, I can't remember, not Baba. I forgot the symbol. The daily chart was extremely extended for the downside. The stock opened with 1% gap up. Volumes, everything was amazing. Beautiful reversal. Touch the view up here. Also the view up, I added, okay? And I said, listen, I'm so exciting. I, I, I'm so exciting. I'm not going to take, to risk one risk unit. No, because this chart is extremely rare, this trade. I will risk two risk units. Now, this is a 10, 10 or 9.8. Once in a week, once in two weeks. But if you are finding eight or 8.50, you can take, instead of 500 shares, you can take 700 or 800 shares. And why is that? Because it's extremely hard to find good, solid, beautiful trades that all the parameters are fit. 
And this is why each and every trade, before you are taking it, you need to say, wait a second, this is a normal trade between six to eight, I will take $800 risk, I will take. Normal risk unit. If this trade is more than eight, wait a second. Because I'm objective, I didn't take it, I'm still out. After I'm taking the trade, you know, you're starting to think, who am I? I'm in this trade, uh, before I'm taking this trade, I need to wait what is my, what is the, the rate for this trade. And only after I will take it and I will change my share size. And not because of the stop loss, because of the quality of this trade. And I can tell you, it's extremely helpful to write down what is this trade. This is an eight, no, 850. Because sometimes I'm about to go long or short some stock. And I'm like, this is like, a six. no, it's not even six. Uh, no, I won't take it. I won't take it. When you're talking to yourself, what is the rate of this trade? How would you would explain this trade in front, in front of a class? And if I have a trade that I, I don't know how to explain it in front of a class, I won't take it. And that's why it's extremely important to write it down in notebook. And before I will finish, and of course I will give you time for questions, the best thing I, will, I can tell you to do when you are trading, because sometimes when you are taking double, sh double size, double share size, like in trade number two, the numbers will make you a bit, uh, what's going on? So you need to say, you know what? I'm not used to risk $200 because my risk unit is 100, but I'm risking 200, so wait. Maybe I won't let the stock move until one to two. Maybe I will sell it after one to one and a half. Now you need to write down, I will sell in trade number two at 50, 30, okay? And why I need to write it down? Why I need to write it down? Because you know what would happen five seconds after I will go into this trade above 50? I will go long with a big share size because this trade is 8 or 9 or 10. What would happen after 5, 10 cents because this is the double share size? Oh, I will dump. Yeah, I, 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 no, this is, I'm not used to see this amount of money in my PL. I will sell. It's okay. And of course, don't be harsh with yourself if you're taking a 10 or a 9 trade for a long and you're stopping out and you're losing two risk units because it's extremely tough to find such a good trade and that's why you can let yourself take this two risk unit loss because sometimes when you find such a good trade, this is the trade that will make your money for the week. I'm always explaining that in trading week, Monday I can be flat, Tuesday I can be flat. Like, you know, up 4,000, Tuesday down 3,000, Wednesday like this and I have one day a week that I'm making money. If you make zero 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 three thousand dollars on fridays or thursdays multiply by four you have twelve hundred dollars in your account and that's the problem with traders they're trying to make money each and every day instead of thinking wait a second this is a marathon this is a long run and this is my two tips how to rate your trades we just talk about all the parameters how to uh, be objective with yourself do it before you're taking the trade and it will help you because when you're talking how much I will give it and you know it's it's funny because when I'm mentoring students I'm like what what is this trade it's a seven and the student what this is a seven it's minimum eight <laughs> it's nice to talk about trades like this you know so try to do it and my second tip is to write down on your notebook the numbers the, the your targets because if you are trading with double share size suddenly not uh, each and every day it can be a bit confusing with the numbers and, and more, and that's why it's good to write it down on a notebook. And this is how I trade. I'm looking on the chart. I'm thinking, wait a second. In front of a class, I will be able to explain it? Yes. Okay. Come on, Yogi, what is this? And you know what? From tomorrow, we have like 100 people watching. From tomorrow, we can talk about it. If I will post a trade, judge me. Yogi, this Google, it's a six. I will take it. You know, I'm extremely liberal and open to... To, to anything. You can say anything you want on me. Don't curse. You can curse me, but not in the chat because people are watching. I don't care about anything because I'm always saying who gives up. That's it.